Hey, 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 everybody. Once again, it's the Garage Door Man 82. What are we doing, guys? All right, let's go over troubleshooting tips with the garage door. Now, troubleshooting tips is, let's get started. All right, your troubleshooting tips start with the garage door opener. Now, listen carefully, guys. Your, rec your, rec uh, your receiver light, if that's flashing or out, means it's not receiving any signal at all. You gotta make sure these are aligned. If they're not, the garage door opener will not go in the closed position. The light will sit there and flicker at you, and that'll be it. It's just the way it is. But these, now this is another thing, guys. You have to make sure you insert your wires good. Give them a little pull. I mean, just a little. I mean, you don't have to jerk them out of the wall or anything. Just give them a little tug to make sure they're in there good. That's all. And now, let's... Uh, and I, I, Another thing I gotta tell you guys. These 8500s, they very, very fussy about the garage door being balanced. Now, when I mean balance, what I mean by balance is it has to be pretty well balanced. I mean, the door can't be hot and it can't fall. If the door falls to the ground, you need to call a garage door technician and have them tension that spring. Now, if they don't know how old that spring is, they ain't gonna touch it. They'll deny it and walk away. They will not touch it. I mean, if you wanna go ahead and you know, pay for new springs, yeah, they'll do it, but if they don't know when the last time the door serviced, they will not touch it. I had an old door call a guy, he said it's fine, and walked away. So yeah, you, you gotta make sure your door is balanced. Let me show you what I mean by balance. Oh, and one thing I gotta correct, I didn't write in the other video. If you have a power door lock, be sure you, because you won't be able to lift the door if that's there. So go ahead and retract that by pushing it back. Now you have the red thing, my door is a seven foot tall so door, so I don't need it. Go ahead and grab it, pull it. Let's give this door a balance check. Go ahead and put your hand underneath the strut and go ahead and raise the door. See, it should stay. I mean, look, it's pretty well balanced. Yeah, it stays. Go ahead and give it a lift. There you go, okay. That door is sitting by itself. I am back here. See, the door is sitting by itself. I ain't touching it. That's a balanced door, guys. Go and lift it up a little bit more. Oh, hang on, guys. Give it a little too much juice. Yeah, it's pretty well balanced, guys. See, it stays. We're good. This door is balanced, so the opener doesn't have a problem with it. Now, you don't want to slam it to the ground. I should have warned you of that. So go ahead and just go ahead and close it. It's closed. It's safely to the ground. We're going to re-engage it by just doing that. Uh, next thing we're going to do, guys. Let me let me show you here. Okay, let's say I just installed the door. Let's say this is a brand new opener. I have this for a while now. But let's just say I just installed this. Let's say it's a new unit. Let's just pretend. All right, to program your garage door opener. Say we have, I just installed this. Oh, another thing I want to point out, I didn't point out in the other video. These nuts, these bolts, make sure you tighten these, you know, a little bit of turn on the top, a little bit of turn on the bottom. You gotta go back and forth and tighten them, guys. Do not try to tighten one all the way up because that uh, clamp will, uh, will be, uh, out of whack so you gotta tighten it a little bit at a time each screw you know tighten a little bit of the top tighten a little bit of the bottom just back and forth until it gets good and snug and there is a set screw on the back be sure you tighten that now let's go into our programming mode first thing we'll make sure is this will retract well, I don't know if we will be programmed but if you're gonna reset your limits on your door be sure this is retract because if the opener is not smart enough to lift pull this back the door won't work, so just go ahead and manually unlock it like that. Now, let's go ahead and do some programming. Now, first thing we're going to do, guys, listen carefully. First thing you're going to do is you're going to grab your, these buttons, they're a little different than your 85, 57, and your 85, 50, and the, 80, the 83, 55, they're a little different. This is a little different machine than the other one, because there's not an opener over there. So, we're going to go ahead and program this door, let's say it's new. 
So we're going to push the button until the yellow indicator light comes on. See, it's flashing. Let's go and run the door up. Now, if I let go of the button any time, the door will stop. See? So, we are programming. Now, when you program your door, be careful you do not open it too far, guys. Because these machines will... See, I got it up a little too far that time. So, we're going to just drop, send it down. I did that kind of on purpose, guys. Let's go and just bring it back down a little bit. You want it, like, right there. Perfect. Now, let's grab our remote. This one right here. Hopefully no one's not watching. This one right here. Listen carefully, guys. Listen very carefully. Grab your remote. As soon as you smack that button, immediately push that yellow button. Do not wait until the door closes all the way. You'll mess it all up. Immediately push it. Watch what I do, guys. Watch carefully. Here's our remote. We're going to push the big button. I'm going to immediately push that yellow button. Watch. Just like that. That's how you do that. Now you're setting the up limits. Let's go ahead and run the door down. Now, I, I made a mistake last time. You guys, do not use this to run the door down. That was my bad. Go ahead and use that yellow button. So let's go ahead and do that. This is what you can use to lower the door. Now, same thing. If I was to let off the button, the door will stop. So we are in programming mode. So the opener is going to learn its settings where the door needs to sit. So how much to turn the, the close the door. You know, you don't want where it's going to smash the door on the ground and you... See what I mean? It's... I mean, you want a good seal, so, you know, go ahead and just give it a little tap. Just like that. Now, I'm just going to check the door, make sure no one can't lift it. It's perfect. Now, let's go and set it, guys. Now, how you set this, which is going to complete it, is you're going to grab your remote again. You're done with these buttons. Do not touch them. You're done. Because you, 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 it, won't, it won't complete. Just do not touch these buttons at this point. you got the up and down. you got the down prepared for its down setting. Uh... Your down force, uh, your down setting limit. It's set. You gotta completely set it by pushing the remote. But do not push the button or it won't work. So you're almost done with the down setting settings. To complete it, you are going to push the remote button. I don't matter what one, as long as the left mouse project, it can be the 890, the 893, the 80, no, the 895 max, you know, the one with the LEDs. It don't matter. Just be sure it's a left master product. Go ahead and push the button. Now you can see the door is raising. I have the remote, and I'm not touching the buttons. Now you want to be by the machine just in case something sort of malfunction goes wrong. Perfect. Now, listen carefully guys. Keep your receiver in your hand. Or have it by. Now, now we're going to set the four settings. And what the four settings do, guys, and listen carefully. The four settings, what they do is they learn, the machine learns how much force it has to put on the door to close it or open it. That's what the force settings do. That's how that works. So we're, we're going to do that right now. We're going to go ahead and put it in force. We're going to set down the force settings. And I'll learn how much force it needs to close this door or open it. So we're going to do that right now. Now listen carefully. Now this yellow button, I know the black one I told you push once. The yellow one you push twice. So let's, let's go ahead and do that right now. Once, twice. You see it's flashing. We're ready. When it's flashing, we're ready. Let's go and run it. Now we're in the force settings, and it's going to learn the down force right now. The machine is learning how much force it has to put on this door to close it. Okay, we're halfway done. It's learned the down force. Now it's going to learn the up force. Probably ran this more than I'm supposed to. Hopefully, I don't blow the machine up. But now it's learning the up force right now. Okay, perfect. It knows what's stop. Now the four settings are done. Do not touch it. You're, you're done with this. You're done with the settings. We're done. So, and let, let's go over. The, let's repeat our steps here, guys. Make sure these are nice and snug. And like I said, just give them a little pull. I mean, you don't have to jerk them out of the wall or anything. Make sure your safety sensors are hooked up correctly. Make sure the receiver light's on and the or. The sending light and the receiver light's on. If the receiver light's out, say it's out, it, the machine will not let the door close because it's thinking something's in the way. And if there's something in the way, it will not close. So you got to be sure those are lit. And make sure, you're, like I said, your wires aren't good in. So we're going to close that. But yeah, be sure those are lit good and strong, the uh, receiver light. If it's flashing, not good enough. It has to be lit strong and good. 
Next step, let's go down to your wall console button. Let's take a look inside. Now to reprogram your remotes, guys, Listen, look here, here carefully, everybody. I don't care who is described to my channel. Look at this carefully, guys. I mean, like the LiftMaster 8500 uh, guy. I mean, you know, he, he's got a different name. He's changing his name all the time. I, I can't keep up with it. I hope you're cool with that, man. I, I don't want to upset you, but you do change your name constantly. Let's let's um, let's just kind of chill a little bit about that. Well, we're off that subject, anyways. But the point is, guys, is with this machine, you can reprogram your remotes right here. No more climbing up on the ladder to the head of the motor or anything. Or you don't even actually use this to program the 8500. But if you had a head over there on the ceiling where those brackets sticking down, you just have to climb up to the head of the machine to program your remotes. Now, LiftMaster has changed all that and made it very easy now. So, whoops, excuse me for getting the wall. But anyways, they made it very easy. They put the alarm button right here on the the machine which means you don't have to climb a ladder so that's cool now now say you want to program this remote there's a little hole in there come on there it is okay you push the little button that low light will come on I'll just push the RAM button see that light that will come on that will come on solid well after you push let's say you want to use this button to uh, program so you go ahead and push that button that will go out and you push the other one to set it like this and your door would work but we're not going to do that because this one's already programmed. But that's how you do that. Let's go ahead and close the door because I have the air on. And we'll talk some more. There's that, guys. Perfect. Perfect. Done. And uh, nothing, guys. Uh, Homer, especially, pay attention. This is very, very important to homeowners. If you don't know what you're doing with these springs, do not touch them. Do not touch them springs. These things can be deadly if you don't know what you're doing. Yes, deadly. Do not use screwdrivers to tighten your springs. If you know what you're doing, if you're someone who know what you kind of know what you're doing to tighten your springs, do not use screwdrivers. Get professional winding rods professional lying rods like garage door guys do no screwdrivers so whatever another thing homeowners again any of these bolts are loose do not attempt to tighten them call somebody because if you say these bolts are like loose in this bracket this this bracket's very dangerous when when this door is closed right now this bracket's under a lot of tension right now i mean there's tons of force of tension on that bracket right now. If you would go ahead and take these bolts out, this thing could cut your arm off. Yes, cut your arm off. You would have no arm. Your hand be, you'd be getting stitched up without a hand. Let's put it that way. But this thing is deadly right now. If you were to loosen those bolts, forget it. That thing would be buzz off. <clears throat> Same thing. Just don't use screwdrivers to tighten this, guys. These springs are under a lot of tension. I mean, these things are... You don't want to know what could happen if those things broke on you. I mean, they're not like, uh, uh, what do you call them, like extension springs that run beside the track here like this. Let's say you had an extension spring, you know, you got your cable runs up the door. And you know, there's another pulley that mounts to the side of the track there, and then it run down and hook to your, uh, to your uh, right angle bracket, and then the spring stretches. Well, there's a safety cord in there. If there's not a safety cord in that uh, spring, oh, you don't want to be out here when that explodes, man, because that thing's like a rocket. It, I mean, it'll go right through your wall. So you don't want to be anywhere near them if you don't have the safety cables in there. I mean, that's really bad. So, go, if you can, go towards the spring. They're safer and they're better. They'll last longer. I should get at least 14 years. That's probably a highly rated, anywhere between 20 and 30,000 cycles. I shouldn't have to touch that spring for 14 to 15 years. And my battery's gonna go dead. So we're gonna have to call this video short, guys. I don't know what to tell you guys. I mean, you've obviously seen everything I've done. I showed you how to program the opener. I showed, talked about the safety eyes. And, oh, one more thing I want to talk about real quick, guys, before my phone dies. The wall button, yes, this, has to be mounted five feet up off the floor so small children can't play with it. We, uh, I, I know a little bit about this. So there's a house being re uh, actually brand new built I've been to a few times. 
And guess where the wall button is? It's not to code. It is about right where our light switch is. It's in that proximity. That is not to code. That should have been five feet off off the floor. That is not to code. And this, I mean, there ain't nothing. This doesn't have to be any proximity height. So you can put it where you like it. Another thing I want to point out, guys. Here's where your door sensors are. I think this is federal law across the country. I'm not sure. It varies where you live, but well, everything I heard about on YouTube is these have to be four to six inches off the floor. They can be as low as four inches and they can be as high as six. If they're higher than six, it's against code. So you have to have no more four to six inches off the floor. If they're above six, it's not, up to, it's not code. Wall button has to be five feet up off the floor. Like I said, there's a house that's getting built right now I'm working at. Button's not to code. It's right in line with the wall, uh, with the wall switch, which means a small kid could go up and push it and play it like a toy. Not to code. Those need to be moved. If I was an inspector in this town, I'd fail that. That's not to code. And I hope the people, I hope the inspector turns that down because that's not to code. That needs to be five feet off the floor. So that's how that works, guys. If you install an opener, please put it five feet off the floor so small children can't play with it. Because if something malfunctions with that machine, your kid or your animal or your loved one can be killed. Because this door is the largest moving part of your home. Yes, the largest. It's, 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 it's a garage door, 16 feet long by seven foot tall. Your normal doors in your house are like three, a 3-0 opening by 80 or you know, 3-0 by eight foot. You know, this is the largest moving object of your house. You gotta treat that door with respect. If you don't, it will hurt you and it will kill you. You gotta treat it with respect, man. If you don't, that door will hurt you. It will come crashing down your head. You know, anything can happen. You have to treat that with respect. If you don't, you will get hurt. All right, guys, I I'm done talking like this. I'm gonna ruin my voice, but anyways, guys, I showed you everything about the door. I showed you the remote. I told you how to program it. So, you know, if, if this doesn't help this guy out, I don't want to tell him. He's doing something wrong. Call a garage door technician, man, if you can't figure it out. I showed you everything I know. So, I, bet, I wish you the best of luck, whoever you are. I hope you get it fixed. But I showed you everything you need to know. So, if you can't get it figured out, I guess you're going to have to call a garage door dude, man. Or girl. Or lady. You know. Anyways, I'm going to shut that up now and... Uh, Ooh, I am tired of talking. I've been talking forever. Anyways, guys, once again, this here is the Garage Door Man 82. Holler and pop your collar, and have a good one. I'm out.